So I don't know if this is going to work, but I'm going to give it a go anyway. Um, so I thought it was interesting watching the uh, the video with Bob Martin and the other guy earlier. Um, so I appreciate that that video was to, he's, he's going into the differences between the different styles of TDD. Um, and one of the things that um, kind of noticed was that um, the guy that was kind of doing it, so he's obviously kind of very experienced with doing this and was making kind of lots of, he all, already knew, he already had an idea in his head about how he was going to set things up and so he wasn't using TDD to drive that kind of thing forward. And and so w one of the things that kind of the, the, the Joe mentioned was around you know, having the experience to know how to, you know, how to do that. And, and I think that TDD can kind of help you do that. And I think, I'm not sure if Kent Beck, if Kent Beck covers this in his book. I think he might do, but if not, it's covered in some other stuff. Um, and that's that with, with TDD, you can make, you can make um, the beauty of TDD, or one of the beauties of TDD, is if you're struggling with something, you can you can take TDD right back to kind of basics and use it to just make really really small baby steps. So it kind of felt like in in the video we watched earlier, he was taking giant leaps each time because he knew you know there was no point in it. He didn't need to kind of go through the kind of baby steps. He knew what he wanted to act, to get as the outcome, and therefore he was only doing the tests that were ne that were necessary for the the stage that he wanted to do. Um, and so one of the things that I want to try and do here is is do a similar thing to what he was doing, um, but try and do it in baby steps and show that um, you can start with um, fewer assumptions about where you're going to end up and use TDD to drive that design forward. Um, I'm still probably going to make a whole heap of assumptions that, you know, doing... Uh, subconsciously but I'm going to try and make as few assumptions as possible and just allow the test to to drive the thing forward and so what I've got set up here is um, so I've kind of I've just documented a, a couple of things one the uh, the thing which which they were talking about in the video was the post users endpoint and I think that's interesting but I think the that becomes more interesting when you when it's worked on with the additional context of the login endpoint because uh, for me one of the automatic assumptions about the user's endpoint was that we need to persist we need to actually save a user and I think in the within if you if you just look at the the user's end, the post user's endpoint is in a really dumb way you know we need to submit something like this and we need to get back something like this there's nothing there's nothing implicit in that that says you need to save it you know, so I, I want to start off and say, well, actually, let's let's just kind of do what it's what it wants to, you know, what it's asking for, and and then you know, let's let's see kind of where that goes and and wait until the need arises before we start kind of you know building out and start adding in other things. Um, what I've set up here as a as a kind of a starting point. Um, I was I was thinking about doing this doing this with JavaScript on the basis that you know it requires virtually no setup to kind of get there, um, but I wanted to be able to use um, I wanted to do it in a typed way to make it a little bit more real, um, which meant obviously then getting a, a basic kind of TypeScript setup. So I've got a TS config file with a few kind of bits and pieces in there. Um, I've got um, a TypeScript and TS Node. Uh, set up in here. I'm using Mocha as my uh, test runner of choice just because it's the one I'm most familiar with and therefore I know I can kind of j just hopefully do that without thinking about it too much. Um, and lastly what I've done um, which I think is an in again an interesting kind of, uh, kind of point to this is Trying to make the tests run, trying to bring that sort of the, the TDD, bringing the tests into the coding as, as the kind of continuous cycle and make that as fast as possible. Um, I've also, I'm, I'm using a test, uh, a test run that's built into, the, the, that integrates into VS Code. Um, so I'm using the Mocha Test Explorer extension, uh, which basically connects uh, Mocha to the sidebar here. 
So it means that you know you can be kind of having your kind of code here and you know see the stuff kind of going going green pretty much as as, as you're kind of typing. It's a little bit slow with TypeScript because obviously it has to transpile it and stuff, but um, you know it kind of uh, at least it means yeah we can, we can do it all in kind of one one space here. Um, the last thing to mention is what the test that he would he was doing um, were. We're using we're using a mocked request and response object, um, which kind of implies that it's going to be kind of working with some kind of uh, uh, you know web framework. In that case, I think they were using what, Java Spark, perhaps or something. Um, and in our case, you know, all of our stuff is using Happy. You know, we could be using Express or Core or whatever. And I want to just for a start off ignore that kind of that web front end and just assume that actually this could be anything it could be a console application it could be a web application it could be kind of you know running anywhere um i can if needed kind of then take that on and you know bolt on happy or express and kind of just you know and show how it kind of works with mocks but part of the reason why i don't want to do that at this point is because i don't want to have to mock things in this i want to be able to just kind of run it and just say right you know let's let's kind of um uh, uh, test something without mocking and just test inputs and outputs. Um, so I'll, I'll, I'm going to start off kind of here and just say, right, we're going to test the. Um, if we call if we call this um, call this kind of users and we'll do the authentication and the so not the, the registration and the uh, login uh, off both off this this same thing. Um, so I'm going to add into that for a start off a uh, registration uh, registration and I'm going to move that inside there. I'm just going to move that a little bit smaller because it's a bit crazy on my eyes trying to read that. And I'm going to say so that that starting point uh, uh, it should uh, return a uh, should return user details. Obviously, this is going to be this may be is this going to be slightly different. I think it'll be all right. I think it'll be all right. Uh, so I'm going to say here, um, uh, going to say uh, const new user equals. In fact, actually, let's put up here const uh, registration details. Equals, and then we're going to put in there um, username, uh, username, password, password, and we're going to have about, and that's going to be about. Um, and then we're going to say new user equals uh, users dot. Register registration details. I should say one of the things I'm using. Um, I've got um, GitHub Copilot turned on. It's it's amazing. I just think it's absolutely amazing. Uh, just so much kind of predictive stuff that it does uh, uh, so well. Um, and what I want to assert here. So we're expecting new user to look something uh, along the lines of um, uh, uh, what did I what did I show in here? Some ID and username. So we're expecting it to be something like you know, XXX, XXXX, something or other, um, something a bit like uh, that. That's what we're kind of expecting. Um, uh, so, I'm going to check, I don't want to have to sort of check the, the, the format, I don't want to have to do a kind of regex on that particularly. Um, so what I'm what I'm going to do is I'm going to assert uh, that uh, what are we going to say is is, is this defined yeah is defined uh, new user and I'm going to check uh, new user dot uh, username uh, equal registration details to username and I'm going to check that. Uh, Uh, is 
Let's put yeah, is string is string there we go, that's good isn't it? Uh, ID. So I'm gonna do that and I might uh, just change that to there. So I can now run that. I can run that now and we can see that we've got an error there. We can see straight away there's an error. It can't find users. Um, so this is good. This is good. This is exactly the kind of thing we want. We've got a test. And I and I the thing which I kind of like about this is you know we've not had to do you know a huge amount. We've just said these are the registration details, and basically this is what I want to get out. Um, and then we've just said this, and this is kind of like doing it. So this is my input, this is my expe expected output, that's the thing that I expect to perform the work. And this is saying it can't find users. Uh, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to define uh, users up here. I'm going to, say, I'm going to put uh, class users. In fact, I'm going to export it so that I can just so when I eventually kind of copy it later, it'll it'll all kind of work. Uh, so this brings in another thing. Sometimes when when writing tests like this, I quite like to just kind of write the test and the and the yeah the class or the code the, the code that I'm kind of writing in um in the same file. You know, rather than kind of flicking between a test file and an implementation file, I'll just kind of write it in the same place. And then once I've got it to where I want it to go, just kind of copy it to where it needs to be. Um, yeah, just just for it kind of feels like it kind of keeps the keeps you in that kind of test kind of coding coding bubble. Uh, so um, I can then create a uh, register uh, thing here, and I can put uh, user. Uh, details and that could be an ex ex um, that can be an instance of registration. In fact, let's just this. Let's actually call that registration details as well. And let's say that that's going to uh, return a user. So it's going to return a user. It's called a user response because it's not going to be a user because the user will probably be a, a kind of a, a bigger um, a bigger object. This is going to be quite a minimal object and then it's only got an ID and a username. So I'm going to call it that. Um, and obviously here we've got, um, uh, we don't have either of these two objects here. Um, so I'm going to implement, get rid of them, go away. I'm going to uh, create uh, type registration details. We should export that as well. Export type. I'm also going to export that. Export type user response. And on here, we're going to have a username, which is going to be a string, password, which is going to be a string, and about, which is going to be a string. And on user response, we're going to have username, which is a string, and ID, which is a string. And then uh, here, so our test is we want we want this. So what I can do here is just return um, uh, ID one two three username registration details dot username. Uh, cool. And why is that now complaining? Put my that's public. Ah, of course, idiot. Um, I might, I'm going to call it, so he called it user API earlier, didn't it? So I'm going to call it user API as well, just to be, just to be consistent. And then up here, I'm going to say. Um, uh, const user API equals new user API. I'm just going to uh, do that. There we go. Um, I guess it, you know, it doesn't in this instance. It doesn't really uh, necessarily at this point need to be an instance. But um, uh, in fact, in fact, I'm going to just to, actually just to illustrate, just because I'm, I'm aware of some other kind of points I want to illustrate here. I'm going to declare, because it's not doing anything there, I'm going to declare that as static. Um, 
so now that it does work because it's not doing it. There's nothing in, in the kind of user API that needs needs to be that needs an object of it. So I can create that as a um, uh, as a uh, static method, and that and that should then uh, pass. Uh, and we can see there we have got assertions. Should register uh, should return user details. Um, So that's good, right? That that works. Um, we've now shown that we can register a user. That's you know, in theory, there's there's kind of no 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 problem with that. Um, what we could say is at this point, well, hang on a minute. You know, we've just hard coded the the ID, um, and we don't and we don't want to hard code the ID. Uh, so at this point, we could say, well, okay. Uh, let's uh, let's say if we if we register two users, um, then they should have different IDs. So we could say new user one, new user two, and we could say uh, assert uh, not do not equal not equal uh, new new user one dot id new user two dot id so we could do that uh, what's that going to complain about now I did now. Okay, that's oh, okay so it just doesn't like the should pretend use data should uh, Should uh, issue unique IDs. Okay. Um, so now we've got uh, should return user user details. Should issue unique IDs. That's obviously kind of not not working there. So what we could do here is um, uh, let's go to the terminal and let's do um, npm install uuid. So I know that's a, so we could use that to generate our our uids our uuids. And I know I'm looking at it earlier. I think um, it's I think something like uh, that, and I think hopefully we can do that. So here we might be able to say something like that. And now when the tests maybe run, what do we get? What are we, what's the error now? Ah, how tedious. So let's do that. Let's see what that's doing now. Expand this one, isn't it? Uh, okay, so now we've got issuing unique IDs. Um, so this is great. Um, uh, so we, you know, we've, we've got we're able to kind of create a user. We're able to uh, ensure that we don't have kind of matched up user, user IDs. So that's fine. You know, we, we've not, we've not. I feel like we've made kind of few assumptions here. You know, we've taken registration details and we've returned, um, you know, user object. But now, now if we said, um, in fact, we could just we could refactor those tests a little bit by just taking that upper level to there. Uh, and then we can get rid of that and make that a little bit neater. I'll also get rid of that comment there. Um, now, what about if we if we describe login?
um, I kind of feel like with this, we want to be able to say, uh, so we're going to say it uh, should log a user, a registered user in. Uh, so here we should be able to say, Have a bit of that, okay. We can all most so we've got registered user. Uh, we're going to say, uh, let's let's actually kind of take those two out as there. So, say const username const password equals equals, uh, and then we can get rid of that. Um, So we can do that. Um, might even just do that to kind of save a bit of space. Um, so we've got a new new user there, um, and what we want to then be able to do is say const token equals uh, user dot login. You want to be able to do, I guess, something like that. And get a token back. So that that kind of feels like uh, like something we would want to do. Um, Slightly kind of trying to kind of not get too too far ahead here. Um, and not try and make so much about so obviously here I could even here I can start to kind of uh um uh make assumptions about things. So we could say here that you know we can't really say much about the token at this point. So I'm just gonna say in fact, I'm going to just just because it's I kind of feels into you, know, you might want to kind of add something to that. But I'm, I know we wanted to get a token back from that, uh, so I want to say um, I just want to say is is a string uh, token. So I want to get something back from that. Um, And in fact, I'm not I'm going to call it token. Yeah, let's call it token. Let's call it token. Um, and we can see at the moment that we've got an error there because login doesn't exist. Um, so we could say up here, let's go with public static login. Let's call that login response. Uh, and all we need to do here. Uh, is based on the username and password is return token, token needs to be a string. Uh, so we can just uh, return uh, a token. Uh, actually we need to, actually no we can't just return token, can we? We need to return token. And login response therefore needs to also be token string. Something like that. Um, expected two arguments, but got one. Ah, okay. So uh, let's remove that from there and put login details, login details, and let's export login details. That will hopefully okay. 
So now we've been able to register a user, we're able to log a user in. Um, but we know now, but we, yeah, we know that it's kind of not working, it's not doing exactly what we want it to, but uh, in fact, if we don't really care about that response from there, so we can get rid of that. Um, let's also see, so we, we could tie this up, it's a slightly kind of contrived thing, um, but we could tie this up by saying, uh, and try and kind of illustrate where we're trying to get to, by let's say, let's, just, let's describe an about, uh, uh, an about endpoint. Should uh, uh, return the about data for a user. So this will kind of enable us to, I think, you know, uh, make, force us to wire stuff up. Uh, so we can say about equals about, let's get rid of that in there. Uh, we can log in. Um, and now we can say, now we could possibly say, um, now we could say uh, const uh, about response equals use API dot, uh, let's call it, let's call it get about, let's call it get about, uh, and pass in a token. Uh, and we can say that we expect uh, equal about response and about. So having done that, so having done that, uh, we're now going to get an error because uh, get about doesn't exist. So we can put on here uh, public static get about token string string and now we've got a problem now we've got a problem and in fact we could we could if we wanted to uh, hard code that and put it as about um, and this should now uh, still pass which it does uh, but we can then take that same thing put it there, change that to about two, and we can force it to fail. So we can actually, we can use it, uh, we, can, we can force the fact, oh, in fact let's go, uh, return about user for a different user. Let's do that just to kind of uh, make our point there. So now we've got the problem there. So we're now, so now we've got, to, we've reached the point. We've, we've, we've hard coded so much in here now in how we're working that uh, we've now come unstuck, and we've made, you know, so we've I've tried not to make assumptions here, um, but we've got the idea that you can register a user uh, where you provide registration details that includes the username, password, and about. We've got a login, which uh, to allows you to take a username and a password and resolve that to some kind of token. And we've then got the ability to want to use that token to um, uh, return the original about data uh, for, for, the, for the registered user. And so now we're realizing that actually we can't do that because um, we're not actually, we're not saving it. We're not saving the kind of uh, the user details. Um, so, now we've kind of realized that actually we need some way of storing this, storing this data. And so again, I don't want to, in the, in the video earlier, so he, he just kind of almost made the assumption that that was there by, by the creation of the user service. Uh, that was you know, so all, you know, ultimate assumption, I need to persist something somewhere, or, or that's gonna be a user service and I'm just gonna implement it and not worry about it. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is actually kind of, uh, again, keep it really, really dumb uh, and put uh, const uh, users, uh, and I'm going to make that an array of user. Make that an array of users, which is going to be good. Um, if I'm going to do that, private users. I'm going to create a constructor, and in there we're going to say this dot users equals to array. We don't have a, um, a users 
object yet. So we're going to export type users. Well, I should put user really, shouldn't I? User. Uh, and that's going to have uh, an ID, which will be a string. It's going to have a username, which will be a string. It'll have a password, it'll be a string. It'll have the about text, which will be a string. So now we've got somewhere to store our users. Um, now, because we're going to be using the constructor, I need to instantiate this. Now I need to get rid of the uh, uh, static keyword. Now I need to actually, we're going to need to implement this. So now I need to be able to say, I guess for this I can actually just do new, for that bit I can just do that. Um, uh, I should really here do const user API equals new user API and use that there. Um, and I guess I should do the same thing uh, here, do that. Uh, and we'll do it here as well. Um, and here as well, miss that one. So now we've changed it, it's no longer just a, stat just a load of static methods, now we're actually kind of got something which we're going to instantiate. Um, uh, and what I'm going to do here is say uh, new user equals, uh, and just for the sake of this I'm going to do object.assign, I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do uh, registration details and I'm going to do ID UUID and I'm going to do uh, users dot push new user uh, and there we can put new user dot ID and we'll do new user dot username so now that should hopefully all still work Apart from the last one, which we still haven't resolved yet, um, but our, our our earlier tests are still working. Um, so now I need to kind of resolve the need to resolve this, um, so we can say uh, exactly what it says there, pretty much. You uh, use it there, and we can say uh, if not user. Uh, through error user not found, and we can say if user, oh, it's just like copilot, it's amazing. Invalid password, oh, great, this is just, just exactly uh, marvellous. Uh, and I guess what we're going to want here then is, uh, for the purpose of this, we're going to want to store, we're going to need, um, we're treating this basically as a, the token as a session. So I guess what I can put here is a sessions sessions uh, thing there and that can be and we'll call that a user session uh, and we'll say export type user session equals uh, user ID token string and we can say there sessions is empty as well and on login we can say so having kind of got that we can say uh, and if we create the token as a new UUID as well uh, we can say const session uh, equals and we can put user ID is user ID token is oh, just reads my mind uh, so then we can say yeah, this dot sessions dot push session, and we can return uh, session. And in theory, our tests will still pass. And they do. Uh, so now we've got this uh, get about, uh, and we can now say. Uh, <laughs> Just brilliant. Uh, from there we want the user ID and we can then say this dot 
Uh, so we can let's say if not session valid token, uh, and then we can say let's use it. There we go. Just brilliant. Uh, and then we can return use the dot about. And you never know, maybe, just maybe, get about does not exist. Now, what's going on? What has happened? What have we done wrong? What have we cocked up? Just undo that last bit. Okay, so that was that was all fine. Is that okay? About that, is that okay? This seems to be okay. Ah, okay, okay. That's fine. And um, we can say that. But what we've forgotten to say is if not user throw user not found, that'll do. Look at that, we're all green. So, and I can now just go through and just do a minor bit of refactoring. There's one thing I wanted to do here, and that's, uh, what did I want? Was there something I wanted to refactor? Maybe there wasn't. Perhaps leave it as it is for the moment. Oh, that's right. That's what I was going to do. Um, so the thing which we want, which we're wanting to test here, uh, is is the login thing. Registration is just a, is a is a before thing. So uh, what we want to be able to do here is do a not before each. We want to be able to do before. Um, this the, the the thing the reason for using if if it's not if it's not apparent the reason for using. Um, the uh, the before keyword and the after keyword is because you want when you you want the it if, if the if the test fails in the it section you want it to be because the thing you were testing failed if it if uh, something goes wrong uh, that's not related to the test goes wrong in the before section you know that actually it's not the thing that you're testing that's failing it's something else. Um, and likewise, the after section just means if something has failed in the it section, you can tidy up afterwards. Um, uh, so that user register can go into there. I can go to there. So that just keeps our it section nice and neat, and we can see the bit that we're actually the test that we're actually doing is kind of kept neat. Um, And likewise, we should do the same thing uh, here, but with this. Actually, we can do the same thing. Uh, let's do describe. user one I've added an extra describe so that I can move so that I can add before 
things for each of them separately. Uh, so I can take that, put it up there, and I can take that, put it there, and I can actually take that and put it there. Um, I might actually leave that in there just because just just for the scope of token, just because it kind of makes that slightly kind of easier. And I don't want to have to declare something in the session up here. Um, but I can do that. I can then also do the same thing. Pretty much here. Describe user. Let's call it user two. We can take that from there. Put that up there. Got rid of that. Got rid of that. That's going to go being indented. Goes to there. They are all returning uh, all green. So now we've got something we can kind of uh, reason about. Uh, a bit. Um, and now I might kind of, I'm not sure whether it's kind of makes it kind of harder to read having everything all in one file, but I'm going to persist with this just just for a little bit longer. Um, so one of the things that um, one of the things that we can now look at this and say. Okay, architecture from a technical design point of view, is this how we would want it? Is this how we would want the user API class to be? Um, you know, do we, is it, is it reasonable to think that we're going to have uh, a list of users and a list of sessions in, in memory? You know, which is essentially kind of what this is. And we can reason about that and we might say, well, actually, do you know what, that's, that's, that's fine. But we might say, oh, do you know what, we want to be able to, we, Every time the kind of you know application crashes or restarts or whatever, we're going to reset that and start at zero. So actually, we do need some some type of persistence layer here. But we can do that in a, as in a sort of a, we're being kind of forced into that. We've reasoned about it and we've we've, we've been forced into thinking. Actually, we should uh, we should have some. We should kind of maybe uh, take that out. There should be some sort of database here rather than. Um, uh, rather than doing it in memory, um, and I could bring, I could you know implement a you know Mongo kind of integration here, but I don't want to because this is my unit test, and I don't want my unit tests having to connect to a Mongo database because the Mongo database is not the thing I want to test. Um, so what I want to be able to do is uh, create a, a, a as thin a layer as possible between myself and the Mongo database. And, uh, as a, um, and and create an interface to that, and then depend on that uh, interface. So for that, bear in mind that what I'm doing here is I'm uh, if I look at what, look at what we're doing for uh, new users, uh, what I'm doing is I'm effectively kind of adding them, uh, you know, because because here I'm I'm kind of pushing it, uh, and I'm also. Um, uh, Find, yeah, finding them here as well. So that's they're they're the kind of the two operations that I'm uh, that I'm performing there um, on on the users. And similarly with sessions, uh, what I'm doing is I'm adding a session uh, and I'm and I'm finding a session. So I could I could here define uh, two more things. So I could say export. Um, I can't know whether to do a sort of a type or an interface here, but um, what I'm going to do is an interface. I know TypeScript kind of this is kind of stuff in a bit of a kind of a weird way, and I'm going to call this just for the just for the uh, to make a point. I'm going to actually kind of make this kind of separate. Um, I'm going to call that get user. I'm actually I'm going to call that find user rather than get user. Um, it's going to be by username. Um, and I also want to be able to. I'm not going to do it using promises for the moment because um, I'll just have to kind of rewrite some of the code that I've kind of written 
to a white everything. Uh, but you know, essentially the whole thing. But you know, done done async with promises be exactly the same. You just have a white in a few places. Uh, so this is going to uh, push an instance of user. Let's put add user user uh, user, and that's going to return uh, void. No, it's not. It's going to return. No, it's not, is it? It's going to we're going to take registration details into that, aren't we? Let's take registration details. Um, and again, I could uh, I, I could create create another object to kind of separate this, um, but I don't. Uh, I guess at the moment I can't I can't be bothered to to do that kind of right now. It feels like it's kind of like I don't I don't need to do that. Um, uh, it probably, but it, but it would be a good idea to perhaps kind of separate out the thing which is being kind of used for the public side and the thing which is being used uh, in internally. Um, uh, yeah, I'll keep it as is for the moment. Uh, so I could do that, um, and now I guess what I want to do is uh, I want to have that depend. Uh, on a user DB, user DB, and instead of that, I want to be able to do uh, registration details add user. I want to be able to do that. So we should see this now. This is going to error. In fact, actually, if I comment that out for the moment. Uh, so, all, so in fact, if I just take that out of there for the moment, we can. We should be able to see that the. This should all work. Is this all working? Just comment that out for the moment. Right. Let's start users. Don't push. Let's put it back the way it was just for the moment. Uh, new user. So that should all now work. Good. Right. Uh, let's take this one step at a time. We can do that, we can prove that we're still working, we're still green. Which is nice, that keeps us. Uh, we can see now if we do private user db, user db, that should now uh, error. It's good. Uh, we can create a, for our test purpose, uh, let's create a, a user db. And just add on there, add user, user, um, and return. Do what I want to do. But I'm just going to just to keep this. This will hopefully all become apparent quite soon. <clears throat> uh, use DB, add user. Users dot push so what I'm doing here is uh, basically I'm going to produce a fake of this uh, user database. Um, 
this new user. So that user push return that, that. And that also wants find user username. So that gives us what we want there, and we can now take that and pass that in to there. So now we may find ourselves back uh, Like working again, maybe you never know. Oh, here we go. Uh, in the, da, 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 da. What do we have here? Oh, yes, we need. We are saying, if not the user through uh, const user equals return user. There we go. That should now. Okay, <clears throat> so we've now got our test back parsing again, um, having inserted the, a user database. And now what we can do is just go through here and just say uh, this.users.add add user. Let me just do what I was going to do the first time around. Uh, we can say because we don't want to, we don't want the test to, we don't want the test to fail unless they absolutely have to. User two equals this dot. User db dot add user. So that should still that should still pass because we're we should be able to put that in there and that in there and for some of these tests it'll pass and we should now find that perhaps the ones at the end will kind of uh, will fail. Hello. So in that case, let's take that out of there, let's take that out of there, and let's get rid of that. Ah, okay, so now we've... So that should have... That should have failed. That should have failed there, I think. Well, that doesn't fail on the uh, on the login. Ah, because we're st of course we're still pushing it into there, aren't we? We're still pushing it into there, um, and we're doing it based on username, not based on ID. Okay, it's fine. It's fine, 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 fine. So that means in here, we can also then come in here and say uh, user equals user db dot find user, and that can be login details dot username. We can also get rid of that, and we'll also be able to get rid of that at some point because we don't need it. So that should, that test should still pass with that. If we add that into here, then I guess we're going to start seeing, we're going to start seeing errors. That's okay, that's okay. So now we can go through, um, Ah, so we do need to be able to find the user by by ID as well. So actually we're going to add on to here, find user 
by ID ID I'm going to go and just add that in there find user by ID ID use username ID equals ID that will enable us to then take uh, that line there and put it into there uh, which is fine, the errors will, will still have the things some of the tests failing but now we can go through and probably remove all of this stuff get rid of that get rid of that uh, get rid of that get rid of that and return that this now may well pass no, nope, not yet uh, user not found db used Also got rid of that and that. Uh, right, what have we? Then I've only created one. Uh, Describe users. Okay, so we've created that fake user DB there. I'm also going to add another, um, just a, a fake method on here. Let's uh, um, I'm not going to add a fake method. What I'm going to do is just have something just to kind of make this uh, possibly work before each. Users equals so that'll reset the user database before each one. User not found. Ah, 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 that should be by ID. It's about okay. So I, poss I might not have needed to do that. I think that that will possibly come in that I need to reset the database after each uh, each time. But uh, for the moment, uh, let's not put it in there because it's not actually kind of uh, causing anything to error. Um, so I'm actually going to call that. I'm just going to call that fake just to make it ex explicit. There. Um, I'm going to move those outside. Fake user DB. Fake user DB. Fake user database. Fake user database. Fake user database. Fake user database. Now I can get rid of, so I can get rid of that. I can get rid of that and call that user and that user. I can call that user and that user. I can get rid of that, I can get rid of that, get rid of that. Uh, that should all still work. Get rid of that. That can be user, that can be user, that can be user, that can be saved. I should now also be able to get rid of that. And that. that should all still work. And now we can repeat that process for our uh, 
use a session database. Add session and to create. What? How are we creating a session? Uh, yeah. So uh, da, 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 use a session. In fact, we're going to add session. Let's do. Let's do create session there. I'm going to call it add session because we've got to call it add user, so I'll call it add session as well. Um, but I'm going to just use user ID for that. And that's going to create a. Is it creating a user session? I think it is. A, yes, it's creating a user session. And we're going to find session, which takes a token and returns a user session. Uh, and then we're going to create a fake implementation of that. Uh, so we're going to create let sessions equal let sessions uh, user session equal that. We're going to say const fake session db is that. We're going to say add session user id. Look at that, just amazing, amazing. Uh, find session. Da, 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 da. Oh, copilot, just incredible. Absolutely incredible. So now, now we should be able to say private session DB user session DB. That should now throw an error because we haven't uh, passed that in. Two arguments expected. So we can take our fake uh, thing there, we can pass that in there, we can pass that in there. Pass that in there, pass that in there, pass that in there. That should now uh, recompile again and everything's working again. So now we can go and refactor this. Uh, where we have the create sessions, we can also do uh, this dot session db dot add session uh, user dot id, and that's going to create. Let's call that session two for the moment. Uh, and here we're going to put const session. Two equals this dot session db that find session token, uh, and that's it. Is that, is that it? That is probably it. Uh, we should be able to save that. That should still work. What have we? What have we done there that it didn't like? So that should also why is that complaining about that? Session not found. Session what's fine? Session token user session. Ah of course, um it's because up here we're not actually the token that we're generating a unique token, so yes, right. So if we now change that to be session two, and we change that to session two, so we're just flipping it over, now that should pass again. Although not there, because we may need to comment that out first. Okay, so we just needed, because we were generating a token the old way, checking it the new way and it wasn't liking it. So uh, we can get rid of that and change that to just session. We can change that to session. We can get rid of that code. 
that should all still work. We can get rid of the sessions value there, we can get rid of that. And we've now extracted uh, our uh, session user session effect database persistence layer. We've, we've extracted it. Uh, quite dark in here. Let's put that on. Uh, yeah, we've extracted that uh, fake session. Oh, sorry, extracted the the, the sort of session persistence outside of that that user class. Uh, and we've done that uh, because we could you know see that. Yeah, you know, we didn't we didn't assume that we needed to that, but having kind of implemented something, we then realised actually, do you know what we need to we need to do we need to create um, something to persist it. Uh, we, the an assumption that I'm making here is that it's 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 evident that including Mongo in our tests at this point is not a good idea, um, and if that's if that's not evident, then uh, a good reason for not including Mongo here is because of the speed of the database. Now, some people would say that it's fine. You know, the, so I know uh, David Heinemeyer Hansen, the creator of Ruby on Rails, there's a great series of talks uh, between him and Martin Fowler about TDD. No, it's not between him and Martin Fowler, it's between him and Kent Beck. It's um, moderated by Martin Fowler um, uh, under the uh, headline of TDD is Dead. Um, because that was another blog article that David Heinemeyer Hansen wrote. Um, and I think he, David Heinemeyer Hansen would advocate, you know, doing those, you know, testing the database as part of that, and that actually kind of creating the, the sort of separation is just, uh, you know, you're just wasting time not testing the thing which needs to be tested. Um, uh, I, I guess I, I still kind of feel like TDD should be should be testing your code it shouldn't be testing if it shouldn't be testing this external thing that mongo is um but having now kind of created this uh this this kind of fake session db uh you know if i wanted to all i need to do now um you know is implement you know i, I could create a new uh you know class uh session db um and in that, you know, it could have a kind of a construct. It could uh, instantiate, you know, new. This could be a, um, you know, a Mongo instance there. That's going to be our, 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 our you yeah, know, Mongo client. And then when we get our add session and, uh, and, and 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 find session in there, you know, we're going to be going, uh, uh, you know, Mongo dot uh, whatever. In in in, well, actually, I guess we're going to be doing. Uh, for start off, we're going to get our uh, constructor. Um, and we're going to be doing something like uh, mongo equal mongo dot connect. Uh, we're going to be doing something something kind of like you know vaguely like that. Const uh, uh, connection equals await. You know async. It's probably not going to go there, is it? It's going to be this dot connection, and that's going to probably go there. And we're probably going to do something, you know, some something something like that. And then in here we're going to go, uh, you know, connection dot whatever. Um, uh, so we you know we could do our kind of real implementation there, and then just you know sort of swap swap it out um, for the fake one in our in our, in our real code. But, but I'm I'm kind of hoping that what I've what I've done here is kind of shown how you can, you know write your tests making fewer assumptions and then use that to you know force the design of your code forward uh, what I'll just do as a last step here is I'll just create um, so we'll call this uh, user API uh, dot TS uh, and I'll take that from there I'm going to remove all of that from Do you know there's one other thing? I'm gonna I'm gonna stop I'm gonna sort of stop this up after this bit. There's a few other things that we could kind of talk about here as well, but I'm gonna do that. Uh, I'm also gonna create a new file there called uh, models.ts. 
and I'm going to move all of those uh, move the models to there I'm missing imports, there we go it's all good, and we go back to here and we're going to say uh, import I'm not sure how we've, why that's not there we go, that's models Use a DB, in fact, use DB, where should that be? Use DB interface. I'll leave them there for the moment. Uh, let's do that. And we're missing imports. Okay, that's that. Uh, we could also then create a new oh, no, I won't do that now in case it cocks up the running of the tests. Uh, I, would I move that to the bottom? I'd probably move that to the bottom of the uh, probably move that down here. Maybe you kind of put that inside there uh, and just do that and then put. Can I do that? No, it's not going to let me do that. So, yeah. Leave that as it is there. Um, well that's const for the moment because that's. Leave that as it is. Go back to our tests, check they all still run. Okay, not going to let me move them to the bottom of the uh, file. Uh, but I would probably extract. I would probably extract these um, at some point, some somewhere else. Um, but yeah, hope hopefully you know. So that's so having kind of written those tests, uh, you know, we've got tests for for registration, we've got tests for login, we've got tests for about, and we've used those to drive the design of this. Uh, user API class which in the end of it was just you know just that and having then created that we've then extracted the persistence of the users and the sessions and put those behind two uh, two interfaces so that the user API class now just depends on those interfaces um, for testing purposes we've got fake implementations of those uh, of those databases, so I've not I've not mocked it. I've given it a fake um, there, uh, and you know hopefully uh, uh, it's it's you know you can see how we could then just create a real implementation of of, of user DB and user session uh, user session DB, um, define these methods and add Mongo to it to you know generate these you know to add 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 records to a database and retrieve them again. And we'd want to keep, you know, these these classes, the user session DB and the user DB, as thin as possible. Uh, and then we might want to kind of like cover the connection between user DB and Mongo. We might want to kind of cover those with some integration tests to check that they they kind of work. But essentially, as long as that interface kind of as long as these interfaces hold up, then you know our code here uh, works fine. Uh, what would be an interesting kind of uh, Next step that I might, if, if anyone's interested, uh, might do as, as, as a further thing is to look at how we handle uh, passwords. 
Uh, so, so here we're obviously kind of dealing with the passwords in plain text. Uh, how we use, how we would implement some form of hashing here, and how we, where that kind of fits into this, and how that kind of works with our testing, uh, might also be kind of quite an interesting thing. Um, I feel like it's been kind of quite a long video. So it's been an hour and a quarter. Um, I don't know. You tell me if that's kind of interesting or not. And if it is, I'll do more. If it's not, then I won't.